I'm lucky enough to be here in Croatia because the kind folks at Elite have invited me out to check out their water bottle factory. And they know a thing or two about bottles because they've been making them since 1983. And well, most of us actually, we probably take water bottles for granted, let's face it. But today I'm going to find out just exactly how this is turned into this. What is a bottle made from then? Well, Elite, they actually make water bottles out of two different types of plastic here. So a standard bottle like the Corsa, that's made from some of this low density polyethylene. Now this bag itself weighs about 25 kilos and it can make, get this, about 400 of these bottles, which is mind blowing to think about it. Talk about good use of volume. What about those lightweight fly bottles then? Well, Elite actually developed their very own special compound which took about a year's worth of time to actually refine in order to be used inside of a water bottle. More on those lightweight fly bottles later though, but back to these ones. Well, first up, these pellets, they're loaded into that and it's pumped around into the factory as you can hear right now. Let's go and check out those machines to see just how it's done. So the pellets, they've been pumped into the back of the machine and they've been heated up to 175 degrees centigrade and pushed forward before it starts to extrude like so. As you can see there, that's really hot, but also really pliable too. So then this part of the mold moves across and it clamps it inside and then a load of air comes in there, essentially blowing it into shape and it forms the whole bottle, including the thread of the neck there too. At this point, the mold also determines the various thicknesses of the bottle. So the side of it, as well as the base, as well as the top too. Because obviously you want to have a nice solid base so it doesn't collapse under its own weight and a nice strong neck so that when you screw the lid on, it's gonna stay in place. The screen here actually shows you the different thicknesses of all those various parts. Now it doesn't stop there though. Once that's actually been blow molded into shape, it moves along and then the tooling phase happens. So essentially it's making sure that there's no rough edges or anything like that on the top or bottom and also that the threads are nice and precise. Then it moves on to a pressure test. So that actually tries to put some air into the bottle to check for any pinholes or anything like that. If there are, then bottles rejected and recycled as are any of the offcuts that you're going to see too from the top and bottom of the bottles when they're actually being formed. They then simply follow through on this conveyor belt, they get ground up into little bits and remade into another bottle. There is literally no waste of this whatsoever. Now this machine here can produce about 8,000 bottles a day because it can come out of both sides and whilst one's having a process done, the other one can slowly begin its life. Whilst we come all the way down to the end here, we've got a dual blow mold system, which means that essentially you can fuse or blend two different materials together, like this bottle actually in my hand, where it's got a clear stripe there, meaning you can have a coloured bottle along with that, so you can, well, see how much liquid you've got left out on your ride. Speaking of colours, if you're wondering how they get turned into these bright little beauties here, well, it's a pretty simple affair, actually, because remember those white polyethylene pellets that get melted down into a bottle? Well, you just need 1.5% of a little pigment or little pellet there, which is coloured, and that's enough to give you one of those brightly coloured bottles. Right then, let's move on to the fly bottle. Named so because of its low weight, and a bottle which I was first introduced to a couple of years ago at Eurobike, and believe me, I put it on the scales and it did in fact blow my mind because this is just 54 grams. Compared to the Corsa bottle we've been looking at previously, that's 87 grams. So the cost per gram saving is probably one of the best ways you can actually lose some weight from your bike. But how do they do it? Well, firstly, it's a different manufacturing process and it did take about three years of the total project. Of course, I've already mentioned about developing the secret formula inside of it. They did run into a few challenges along the way. The first one, obviously developing the right compound, as well as making sure it's odorless and importantly, nice and soft to the grip too. Now that secret formula compound is actually stored up there and dried out for a minimum of four hours, otherwise it simply will not work. When it's ready to be processed, it comes down, travels along here at 220 degrees centigrade before then it's injected into the mold and then the following magic starts to happen. 
The plastic used in these bottles can be made incredibly thin where the extra strength is not necessarily required, such as to add the soft grip-like on the sides and then beefed up where it is needed, so the neck and the base, just like the other water bottles. It's also pressure tested and left to cool down. These fly bottles actually take a little bit longer. They take about 20 minutes. Oh, that's that special mix of the fly bottles. Better not take any. Right, okay, we've made our bottles, but how are we gonna stop the liquid from flying out the top of it then? Well, firstly, the coarser bottle lids, they're still actually made in Italy, but soon they're gonna be moving here to Croatia because Elite have just made a factory just next door. But right now, the fly bottle lids are made here. And actually, the lid is one of the reasons why the bottle is so light, because it's really minimalistic. Now, this machine has a double injection mold and actually combines two materials within it. So the bottom row of molds there, that actually accepts the molten plastic, if you like, and then forms the basis of the lid. When that's done, it rotates around, and then this top, almost rubber-like substance is pressed into place, and it's simply the heat of the two make it join together. Now, there's two reasons for this, the aesthetics, and also, this has got a slightly grippy feel to it. So when it gets a little bit wet, it becomes just a little bit sticky there too. Now, the rubber nozzle, or valve, if you like, that's actually pushed into place using a machine but it does require some human assistance here. So a human actually has to line up the bottle top underneath the machine before pressing a button and it gets pushed into place. Now this process, again, currently isn't here, but in a month's time it will be. So it's gonna be an almost one-stop does all type facility. artwork. This is the part I had literally no idea how it was done. At first I thought, oh maybe the bottle is laid out flat and then they print it and then they form it into position. I don't know. I didn't want to ruin the surprise. I'm here now. I'm going to find out how they get extremely cool looking bottles. So this machine, extremely advanced I've been told. It can print up to six different layers onto a plain bottle. Let's have a look at the process from start until finish. Now first up, the bottles, well, they're chucked into this big container here, and then they've got this almost escalator type machine. They drop down into a big sorting wheel, then they go onto a conveyor belt. At that point, if a bottle is not facing in the right direction, a laser detects it, picks it up via a little sucker, turns it around, drops it back on the conveyor, and it heads towards the painting machine. The bottles are first cleaned with a brush system to make sure there's no dust, and they then continue to aflame for a split second. This again makes sure the surface is best for paint adhesion. The paint of the graphic design is then applied and is then put through a UV light quickly to dry it before moving on to the next colour. The bottle eventually reaches a camera that quickly scans the bottle to make sure that again it matches up perfectly with a design file and is precise to 0.2 of a millimetre. If it doesn't match, it's rejected. But don't worry, the rejected bottles are collected and will be broken down and recycled to be remade into a future bottle. There is no waste whatsoever. Sticking with recycling, you'll be pleased to know that the bottles are made of a corn-based plastic as opposed to an oil-based product, meaning that the bottles are 100% biodegradable. How cool is that? But I'm not finished with artwork just yet. Oh no, this is the latest bit of kit. It's about two weeks old, and this can loosely be described, I guess, as a ginormous inkjet printer. It's full of cables and wires inside of there. But the great advantage of this is that very soon, consumers like you and I will easily be able to, from the comfort of our own home, upload our very own image or slogan, whatever, and it get printed onto a water bottle. Now, it uses four different colors, so cyan, magenta, yellow, and key, or black, and each layer is printed in turn before it simply heads on down over on the conveyor belt. It can print up to 5,000 of those an hour. That is simply incredible. I love this machine. It's like the Rolls Royce of printing. Right, there we are, how water bottles are made. I had literally no idea, now I do. It's one I've ticked off of my list. Let me know though what you would like to see being made too. Also, if you were gonna have a picture printed onto a water bottle, what would it be and why? Let me know down there in the comments section. Don't forget to like and share this video with your friends. Give it a big thumbs up, tell everybody about it. Don't forget, check out the GCN shop at shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com for a whole heap of goodies. And now, to see Cy when he visited the Elite Turbo Trainer factory, click just down here. And while me, I'm not gonna go thirsty with all these, am I? Oh no.